Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and recently I got hit with another of 2020's seemingly endless string of challenges. I must have been living under a rock when it was originally announced in November of 2019, but I just discovered that Google's going to end its cloud print service at the end of the year. I've got all kinds of computers. Windows 10, legacy Windows XP, Linux, iPads, Android tablets, Android phones, but for most of our casual use, my wife and I depend heavily on Chromebooks. Yeah, I know, we're boomers, but we like to occasionally print documents like recipes, confirmations, and scripts. One of my printers was not directly supported by the Chrome operating system. However, Google Cloud Print allowed me to use it easily. Unfortunately, Cloud Print is going away at the end of the year, so I need to figure out something quickly. So why don't you join me in my search for a post-Google Cloud Print solution? Google Cloud Print has been in beta testing ever since it was introduced in 2010. This means a stable version has never been officially released. However, lots of people have found it was a good bridge between Chromebooks and legacy printers. Almost all printers were supported, which allowed the use of legacy printers. In addition, you could use Chrome to print from anywhere and would wind up at your network connected printer. However, by November 2019, Google had incorporated the common Unix printing system, also known as CUPS, to allow more legacy printers to work with Chrome. So Google decided to deprecate Cloud Print by the end of 2020. I have a brother 7820N multifunction laser printer that I use for most of my draft printing. When I visited the brother website, they stated that there was no solution to the deprecation of Cloud Print for my printer. Since I really only want to print for my home, I thought that setting up a local network print server would be a good way to replace cloud print. There are several references on the web that discuss how to set up a Raspberry Pi as a low-cost print server. Since I have a bunch of Pis, I figured, why not? I started with a Raspberry Pi 0W running the full Raspberry Pi operating system. After an update and upgrade, I install cups by entering sudo app git install cups into the Pi terminal. I'm speeding up this video since nobody wants to see how poorly I type. Since I already had cups on this Pi, the installation was not repeated. Otherwise, I would have responded yes to the confirmation to install. Next, I gave the Pi user directory rights to use cups by entering sudo usermod a dash g lp admin pi. Then I restarted cups by entering sudo systemctl restart cups. Next, I obtained the local IP address of the Raspberry Pi by entering hostname dash i and discovered it was 192.168.1.101. Remember that number. I'll use it later when I add my printer into CUPS. In order to allow the print server to work with Windows, I installed Samba, a program that allows interoperability communications between Windows and Linux. I'm not sure if I needed to do that if all I was going to use was a Chromebook, but I wanted to leave my options open. I entered sudo apt-git install samba. Then I used nano to edit the samba configuration file to grant all users access. After entering sudo nano slash etsy slash samba slash smb.conf, I scrolled to the bottom of the file and changed two lines to guest ok equal yes and read only equal no. Then I exited Nano by typing Control X, Y, and then Enter. Finally, I restarted Samba by entering sudo systemctl restart smbd.
Now that both Cups and Samba were running on the Raspberry Pi, we need to install a printer in Cups. Use a web browser on any PC that's on your network to navigate to port 631 at the IP address we obtained earlier. In my case, it was 192.168.1.101 colon 631. That should open the CUPS menu. Click on Adding Printers and Classes. Then click on Add Printer. CUPS won't add the printer without your credentials, so click on the admin link provided. Click on Add Printer again and enter your Raspberry Pi user ID and password. After a short time, CUPS will return a list of all the printers it detected. Select the desired printer and click Continue. Then name the printer whatever you want and select the location if desired. Make sure you check Share this printer before you click on Continue. The next screen will ask you to choose a printer driver. Since my printer wasn't listed, I went to openprinting.org to download the PPD file for my printer. Then back in CUPS, I clicked on Choose File, select the PPD file, and then click on Add Printer. I chose to keep the default printer options, so I clicked on Set Default Options on the next screen. After a little time, the printer administration page appeared and I chose to print a test page. After a short wait, the printer printed the test page. Success! Finally, I needed to set up the print server on my Chromebook. From the advanced options in settings, I clicked on printers and then on add printers. At the lower left hand corner of the Add Printers Manually dialog box, I clicked on Print Server. On the next screen, I entered the local IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Remember, in this case, 192.168.1.101, and then Add. The Chromebook recognized the printer, and I clicked Save to add it to my profile. After exiting the settings page, I selected the printer on the print server by clicking on See More and selecting the printer. I was happy to see the print complete message at the bottom of the screen without the use of Google Cloud Print. Unfortunately, it was very slow. It took about 4 minutes 10 seconds to print this one page. Surely there must be a faster way. So I tried changing the Raspberry Pi operating system to a light, fast system. Various sources recommended installing Diet Pi, so I chased down that rabbit hole. Ultimately, the CUPS program that works with Diet Pi did not play nicely with my printer, and I scrapped that plan. I still wanted to improve the speed, so I installed the Raspberry Pi Lite operating system. This time CUPS played nicely with my printer, but it was still very slow. The speed only improved by 5 seconds to 4 minutes and 5 seconds. I thought that maybe the wireless connection I was using was slowing things down, so I disabled the wireless connection on the Pi Zero and used a USB adapter to connect to an Ethernet cable. The print time was exactly the same as the wireless connection, so connection speed was not a factor. It must be the processor speed. So I loaded CUPS into a Raspberry Pi 3 and tried again. 
the print time improved to 3 minutes 50 seconds. This was better, but I didn't think it was worth dedicating a Raspberry Pi 3 as a print server. So I tried to find if there would be a CUPS native print driver that would work faster than the PostScript printer description file I downloaded from Brother. As I dug into the Brother PPD file, I found that my printer could work with the LPR slash LPD protocol. This stands for Line Print Remote, Line Print Damien, and is another standard protocol for transferring data from a computer to a printer. I thought that the Chromebook could also use LPR, so maybe I could directly connect the printer using LPR slash LPD. Previously, I had tried manually adding this printer many times using the default internet printing protocol, but the Chromebook would never find the printer. First, I got the IP address of the Brother printer from the on-screen menu. It was 192.168.1-145 and is a static address. That means that the printer will always ask for that address after power is restored. Then I got into the Add Printer dialog on the Chromebook. This time, instead of using IPP as the protocol, I chose LDP. Then I made up a printer name and entered the address and clicked Add. To my surprise, the Chromebook found the printer and allowed me to install a driver that exactly matched my model number. Of course, the proof is in the pudding, so I tried printing my test page, and to my delight, it printed in only about 10 seconds. That was great news, and it allows us to print all of our documents without having to set up a separate print server. So if you're going to be affected by the end of Google Cloud Print, try installing your printer using LPD. You just might find that you have a simple solution to printing documents from your home. Thanks for joining me today. I solved my problem of Google Cloud Print ending. It was a little messy getting there, but I hadn't been able to find any information on how to hook up my Brother 7820N printer to my Chromebooks. This doesn't restore all the functionality of Google Cloud Print, like printing from anywhere, but it works for my needs of printing locally. Hopefully this information will help you in navigating a post-Cloud Print environment. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down and leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!